What is NATO? NATO stands for the North Atlantic Treaty Organization. A military alliance formed on April 4, 1949, when 12 countries signed the North Atlantic Treaty in Washington, D. C. The original 12 NATO countries were Belgium, Canada, Denmark, France, Iceland, Italy, Luxembourg, the Netherlands, Norway, Portugal, the United Kingdom, and the United States. Each member nation agreed to treat attacks on any other member nation as if it were an attack on itself. In other words, any aggressor would have to face the entire alliance. This was NATO's policy of deterrence. A way of discouraging any attacks by the Soviet Union or other Eastern Bloc countries. The organization had the further benefit of discouraging fighting among the member countries. Three years after it was formed, the alliance was joined by Greece and Turkey, in 1952. West Germany followed three years after that, in 1955, and Spain joined in 1982. After the fall of communism and the reunification of East and West Germany, c. 1990, all of Germany joined the alliance. At this point, with the Cold War, 1947-89, over, many wondered what purpose the organization could serve. After all, the Soviet threat was no longer existent. However, other conflicts loomed on the horizon. Including those in Bosnia and Herzegovina and in the Albanian Republic of Kosovo. Fearing the civil war in the former Yugoslav Republic would spread. NATO sent in troops on the side of the Bosnian government. NATO also formed the Partnership for Peace in 1994, this program was joined by more than 20 countries. Including former Eastern Bloc nations, including Russia. Though these nations are not full members in the NATO alliance. The Partnership for Peace provides for joint military planning among signing nations. On March 12, 1999, three former Eastern Bloc nations were given full membership in NATO. Poland, Czechoslovakia, and Hungary. Observers hailed the additions as evidence that Europe is becoming more unified. On April 23, 1999, the 50th anniversary of the Alliance's founding, the 19 NATO member nations gathered in Washington. DC, to commemorate the event, just after NATO had begun air bombing Yugoslavia. To pressure the government there to accept international terms aimed at bringing peace to the nation's Kosovo province. Where ethnic conflicts between Serbs and Albanians had turned deadly. NATO is governed by the North Atlantic Council which is made up of the heads of government of member nations or their representatives. It was headquartered in Paris until 1967, at which time the offices were moved to Brussels, Belgium. What was the church's role during the Middle Ages? Though the Roman Catholic Church became increasingly involved in secular concerns during the Middle Ages. 
1350, it played a much larger part in medieval European life. Missionaries converted many of the Germanic tribes, thus. The church was influential in civilizing these so-called barbarians. Further, churches throughout Europe housed travelers and served as hospitals for the sick. Monasteries and cathedrals became centers of learning. Who were the Brothers Grimm? The German brothers Jacob, 1785-1863, and Wilhelm, 1786-1859. Best known for their fairy tales, were actually librarians and professors who studied law. Together wrote a dictionary of the German language, and lectured at universities. In 1805 Jacob traveled to Paris to conduct research on Roman law. And in a library there he found medieval German manuscripts of old stories that were slowly disintegrating. He decided the tales were too valuable to lose, and he vowed to collect them. The brothers' interest in fairy tales also led them to search for old traditions. Legends, and tales, especially those meant for children. They traveled the German countryside, interviewing villagers in an effort to gather stories, most of which were from the oral tradition and had never been written down. The brothers were diligent in their efforts, recording everything faithfully so that nothing was added and nothing was left out. When the first volume of Kind Rundhausmarchen, literally, the children's household tales. But known better as Grimm's Fairy Tales, was published in 1812, children loved it. Subsequent volumes were published in German through 1815. The fairy tales collected in the multi-volume work included such classics as The History of Tom Thumb, Little Red Riding Hood, Bluebeard, Puss in Boots, Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs, Goldilocks and the Three Bears, The Princess and the Pea, The Sleeping Beauty in the Wood, and Cinderella. When did Halley's Comet first appear? Its first noted appearance was in 239 B.C., but it was British astronomer Edmund Halley, 1656 to 1742, who noted that the bright comet he Observed in 1682 followed roughly the same path as those that had been observed in 1531 and 1607 he suggested that they were all the same comet and that it would reappear in 1758. It did reappear. And it was therefore named for Halley, who was England's second astronomer royal. Thanks to Halley, the common man could rest a bit easier at night, before the British astronomer proved. Through his observations and previous astronomical data, that comets are natural objects subject to the laws of gravity. People had viewed occurrences of comets as harbingers of doom. Halley's Comet has been observed by astronomers every time it has appeared since 239 BC. Most recently. Seen in 1985 and 1986, 
the comet will make another appearance in 2061, and roughly every 76 years thereafter. It's also worth noting that it was Halley who encouraged his friend and fellow scientist Sir Isaac Newton. 1642-1727, to write his theory of gravity, which he did, Principia Mathematica. Which Halley used his own money to publish, appeared in 1687 and is considered a seminal work of modern science. How old is Islam? Islam, one of the world's largest religions, originated with the teachings of the Prophet Muhammad, c. 570-632, during the early 600s. Muhammad was born in Mecca. In present-day Saudi Arabia, and was orphaned at the age of six. He was raised by relatives, who trained him as a merchant. When he was 25 years old he married a wealthy widow, Kadia, who bore him several children. In about 610, Muhammad began having visions in which he was called upon by God, Allah. More than 600 of these visions were written down, becoming the sacred text known as the Quran, or Quran. By 613 Muhammad had attracted followers with his messages of one God, Allah's power. The duty of worship and generosity, and the doctrine of the last judgment. Followers of this new religion became known as Muslims, an Arabic word meaning those who submit. To Allah, and the religion itself became known as Islam, meaning submission. Today, there are Muslims in every part of the world, but the largest Muslim communities are in the Middle East. North Africa, Indonesia, Bangladesh, Pakistan, India, and Central Asia. Additionally, most of the people of Turkey and Albania are Muslim. It is the world's second largest religion, after Christianity. Why did NATO respond to the 9-11 attacks? The North Atlantic Treaty Organization, NATO, responded to the terrorist attacks on the United States. Because its charter states that an attack on any member nation is considered an attack on the alliance. The language is contained in Article 5 of the NATO Treaty, signed April 4, 1949, in Washington, D.C. The parties agree that an armed attack against one or more of them in Europe or North America shall be considered an attack against them all and consequently they agree that if such an armed attack occurs, each of them in exercise of the right of individual or collective self-defense, will assist the party or parties so attacked. It was the first time Article 5 had been invoked by NATO since its founding. On September 12, 2001, NATO convened a special meeting in response to the attacks on American soil and afterward issued a statement saying, in part, that the United States could rely on the support and assistance of NATO if it was found that the attack was directed from abroad. The organization's Secretary General, Lord Robertson, 1946, 
strongly condemned the attacks and called for the international community and the members of the alliance to unite their forces in fighting the scourge of terrorism. The invocation of Article 5 was confirmed by NATO on October 2, after U.S. Ambassador at Large Frank Taylor briefed the organization's chief decision making body on the investigations into the terrorist attacks. The North Atlantic Council determined that the information provided by Taylor confirmed that that the individuals who carried out the attacks belonged to the worldwide terrorist network of Al-Qaeda. Headed by Osama bin Laden and protected by the Taliban regime in Afghanistan. At a press conference held October 8, Secretary General Lord Robertson announced NATO's full support for the U.S.-led invasion of Afghanistan. The following day it was confirmed that NATO assets had been deployed to the eastern Mediterranean to establish a presence in the region. But the alliance did not take a lead role in the military effort to oust the Taliban from Afghanistan. Is blues music older than jazz? Only slightly, and only if your definition of jazz doesn't include ragtime. Really, the two musical traditions developed side by side. With blues emerging about the first decade of the 1900s and hitting the height of its early popularity in 1920s Harlem. Where the songs were seen as an expression of African American life. Great blues singers like Ma Rainey, 1886 to 1939, and Bessie Smith, 1894 or 1898 to 1937, sang of the black reality determined but weary. During the Harlem Renaissance, the music was a symbol for African American people who were struggling to be accepted for who they were. Poet Langston Hughes, 1902-1967, saw the blues as a distinctly black musical genre. And as helping to free blacks from American standardization. As the first person to codify and publish blues songs. American musician and composer W.C. Handy, 1873-1958, is considered the father of the blues. The Florence, Alabama, native produced a number of well-known works, including Memphis Blues, St. Louis Blues, which is one of the most frequently recorded songs in popular music. Bale Street Blues, and Careless Love. Who was the first European to traverse the Bering Strait? The Bering Strait, which connects the Arctic Ocean and The Bering Sea is 53 miles across at its most narrow point. The first European to traverse it was Danish navigator Vitus Bering, 1681 to 1741 in 1728 the explorer for whom the strait and the sea were named had been employed by Tsar Peter the Great 1672 to 1725 of Russia to determine whether Asia and North America are connected What was Love Canal?
When Love Canal, a community east of Niagara Falls, New York. Made international headlines in August 1978, it was only after the neighborhood had already been the subject of local newspaper stories since 1976. And sadly, more headlines followed. Into 1980. What had become clear during these years was that Love Canal was toxic. Community residents had experienced unusually high incidences of cancer. Miscarriages, birth defects, and other illnesses. There were also reports that foul odors, oozing sludge, and multicolored pools of substances were emerging from the ground and children and animals returned from outdoor play with rashes and burns on their skin. Unbeknownst to the residents, all of these problems were attributable to the history of the site upon which their community had been built. Beginning in 1947 the Hooker Electrochemical Company had used Love Canal with its clay walls, to dump 21,800 tons of chemical waste. In 1953 the company sold the canal to the Niagara School Board for the sum of $1. The deed acknowledged the buried chemicals, although it did not disclose their type or toxicity. A disclaimer protected the firm from future liability. The canal pit was subsequently sealed with a clay cap designed to prevent rainwater from disturbing the chemicals. Grass was planted. Soon Love Canal had become a 15-acre field. The following year, a school was under construction on the site. In 1955 400 elementary school children began attending classes there and playing on the surrounding fields. Development happened fast, roads, sewers, and utility lines crisscrossed the site, disrupting the soil. While residents began to discern problems as early as 1958, when they complained of nauseating smells and incidences of skin problems. It was not until the mid-1970s that the extent of the hazard became evident. It was then that unusually heavy rainfalls caused chemicals to surface. A portion of the schoolyard collapsed. Strange substances seeped into basements and trees and gardens died. In October 1976 the Niagara Gazette began investigating these problems. But an official investigation did not begin until the following April. By this time, the site was a disaster, toxins were found in storm sewers and basements. Exposed chemical drums leaked substances, and air tests detected dangerously high chemical levels in homes. Further testing identified more than 200 different compounds at the site, including 12 carcinogens, cancer-causing agents, and 14 compounds that can affect the brain and central nervous system. The residents of Love Canal organized. Forming citizen groups including the Love Canal Homeowners Association. These groups succeeded in getting media coverage and in pressuring public officials to act. Finally on August 2, 1978, the New York State Health Commissioner declared Love Canal unsafe. Six days later, President Jimmy Carter, 1924, approved emergency assistance and New York. Governor Hugh Carey announced that funds would be used to purchase homes nearest the canal. While more than 200 families that were perceived to be in danger were moved. 
In 1980 problems resurfaced when researchers found that blood tests of residents showed abnormally high chromosome damage. The state recommended that pregnant women and infants be removed from homes even those that had been certified as safe. In May 1980 conflict ensued between 300 Love Canal homeowners and officials from the Environmental Protection Agency, EPA. On May 21, President Carter declared a second emergency at Love Canal. This time the actions were more comprehensive, almost 800 families were evacuated. And their homes were either destroyed or declared unsafe until further cleanup could be done. Four years later, a new clay cap was installed over the canal. It was also in 1984 that Occidental Petroleum, parent company of the firm that had dumped chemicals in Love Canal, reached a $20 million settlement with residents. The word crusade why do Jews, Christians, and Muslims all claim the same holy land? Palestine, in Southwest Asia, at the eastern end of the Mediterranean Sea, is the holy land of Jews. Since it was there that Moses led the Israelites after he led them out of slavery in Egypt, C. 12th century BC, and where they subsequently established their homeland. It is the holy land of Christians because it was where Jesus Christ was born, lived, and died. And it was the holy land of Muslims, because the Arab people conquered Palestine in the 7th century and except for a brief period during the Crusades. It was ruled by various Muslim dynasties until 1516, when it became part of the Ottoman Empire. Palestine, which covers an area of just more than 10,000 square miles, is roughly the size of Maryland. Palestine's capital, Jerusalem, is also claimed as a holy city by all three religions. Jews call it the city of David, or the city of the great king. Since it was made the capital of the ancient kingdom of Israel in about 1000 BC Christians regard it as holy. Because Jesus traveled with his disciples to Jerusalem, where he observed Passover. It is the site of the Last Supper, and just outside the city, at Golgotha, Jesus was crucified. C. 30 AD. Muslim Arabs captured the city in 638 AD, just after Muhammad's death. And, like the rest of Palestine, it has a long history of Muslim Arab rule. Jerusalem which is now part of the modern state of Israel. Is home to numerous synagogues, churches, and mosques. It has also been the site of numerous religious conflicts throughout history. Comes from the Latin word crux meaning cross, and crusaders were said to have taken up the cross. The Crusades began with an impassioned sermon given by Pope Urban II, c. 1035 1099, at Clermont, France, in November 1095. Earlier that year, Byzantine Emperor Alexius I. Comnus. 1048 1118, had appealed to Urban for aid in fighting back the fierce Seljuk Turks. The Seljuk Turks preceded the Ottoman Turks. 
the Seljuks were named for their traditional founder, Seljuk. Seeing the expansion of the Turks, who were Muslim, as a threat to Christianity, the Pope agreed to help. Not only did Urban rally support for the Byzantines in staving off the further advances of the Turks. He also advocated that the Holy Lands should be recovered from them. While the Arab Muslims who had previously controlled the Holy Land had allowed Christians to visit there, the Turks tolerated no such thing. Urban feared that if Palestine were not recovered, Christians would lose access to their holy places altogether. But Urban also viewed the Crusades as a way of unifying Western Europe. The feudal nobility there had long fought against each other. He believed a foreign war would unite them behind a common cause as Christians. Further, he hoped the Crusades would unite Western with Eastern, Byzantine, Europe behind one goal. If successful, the expeditions would also expand the Pope's moral authority across a greater region. En route from Clermont to Constantinople, present-day Istanbul, Turkey. Where the Crusade was set to begin in August 1096, Urban continued to preach his message at Limoges, Poitiers, Tours, Aquitaine, and Toulouse, France. The message found broad appeal. Even if it appealed to something other than the people's religious sensibilities. Some of those who answered Urban's call took up arms not for the Christian cause but for their own personal gains such as acquiring more land, expanding trade, or recovering religious relics. Many peasants took up the cross to escape hardships in 1094 northern France and the Rhineland. Had been the site of flooding and pestilence, which was followed in 1095 by drought and famine. The First Crusade actually turned into two. A peasant's crusade, which had never been Urban's intent, had gone ahead of the official expedition, and many lives were lost. It ended in failure. But the planned expedition, called the Crusade of Princes, ultimately succeeded in capturing Jerusalem in 1099. Western Christian feudal states were established at Edessa. Antioch, and Tripoli all of which were placed under the authority of the Kingdom of Jerusalem. But Urban did not live to see the recovery of the Holy Land, and the Christian hold on Palestine was not to last. As the Muslims refused to give up the fight for control of lands they too considered to be holy. The second, 1147-49, third, 1189-92, fourth, 1202-04, fifth, 1217-21, sixth, 1228-29, seventh, 1248-49, 1270. Crusades were prompted by a mix of religious, political, and social circumstances. The Crusades ended in 1291 almost 200 years after they had started when the city of Acre, the last Christian stronghold in Palestine, fell to the Muslims, ending Christian rule in the East. Yet another crusade. In 1212, was particularly tragic, called the Children's Crusade. The expedition was led by a young visionary who had rallied French and German children to believe they could recover Jerusalem since. 
as poor and faithful servants, they would have God on their side. As the children marched south across Europe, many of them died even before reaching the Mediterranean coast. Some believe that the crusade was sabotage, resulting in the children being sold into slavery in the East. When was London's Westminster Abbey built? The famed National Church of England was begun between 1042 and 1065 when Edward the Confessor, c. 1003 to 1066, built a church on the site of the Abbey. King Henry III, 1207 to 1272, began work on the main part of Westminster in 1245 since the time of William the Conqueror, 1066, all of England's rulers. Except Edward V and Edward VIII, have been crowned at the church. The Abbey is also a burial place of great English statesmen and literary giants. The latter are buried in the poet's corner. What is the Palestine Liberation Organization? It is a group formed in 1964 by Arabs in Palestine, a region coextensive with the Nation of Israel. Known as the PLO, the organization seeks to establish an area of self rule for Muslims. Dominated by then guerrilla leader Yasser Arafat, 1929-2004. The PLO regarded Israel as an illegitimate state and became determined to establish a Palestinian state in the region. In 1974 the PLO was recognized by the United Nations and by Arab countries as the governing body of the Palestinian people, however. The Palestinians remained without a homeland and continued to fight for one, often resorting to terrorist tactics. In 1993 Israel and the PLO, still under Arafat's leadership, officially recognized each other. In an internationally brokered agreement, Israel agreed that by early 1996 it would withdraw its troops from the Gaza Strip. A tiny ribbon of land along the Mediterranean and bordering Egypt. And most cities and towns of the West Bank, a larger region lying west of the Jordan River and Dead Sea. The city of Jerusalem, recognized by both Israelis and Palestinians as their capitals. Straddles the western border of the West Bank and is divided into an Arab East Jerusalem and a Jewish Israeli West Jerusalem. The 1993 Arab Israeli Agreement, called the Oslo Accords, effectively carved out an autonomous Palestinian homeland, or at least an autonomous region. To govern this region, the Palestinian Authority, PA, was set up. In 1994 Arafat and Israeli leaders Yitzhak Rabin, 1922-1995, and Shimon Peres, 1923, were awarded the Nobel Peace Prize for their efforts. In January 1996 Palestinians in the Gaza Strip and the Palestinian-controlled parts of the West Bank elected a legislature and a president, Arafat, to govern these areas. But the Accords foundered, 
both sides contributed to an escalation of violence in the long troubled region. In 2003 the Roadmap for Peace, developed by the United States, in cooperation with Russia. The European Union, and the United Nations, was presented to Israel and the Palestinian Authority, PA. The plan outlined clear goals and timelines for their achievement for both sides. Still the violence continued. With both sides failing to take the reciprocal steps necessary to peaceably coexist in the region. Cautious hopes for peace were again raised in February 2005 when Palestinian leader Mahmoud Abbas, who in January succeeded Arafat, and Israeli Prime Minister Ariel Sharon met at an Egyptian resort for summit talks. The two announced a verbal ceasefire pledge. Sharon promised that the Israeli military would end assaults on Palestinians. And Abbas vowed to bring an end to militant attacks on Israelis. But there were obstacles to the agreement, Israeli settlements in the Gaza Strip and West Bank needed to be dismantled. The Palestinians needed to gain control of the militant group Hamas. Responsible for hundreds of acts of terrorism against Israelis, and the Israeli military needed to step down its responses. The Palestinian government remained tied to the PLO. Who were the Lombards? The Lombards, too, were a Germanic tribe. They are believed to have originated on an island in the Baltic Sea. In the last century BC, the Lombards moved into Germany and gradually continued southward so that by AD 500, they were settled in present-day Austria. From 568 to the mid 700s, they controlled much of Italy. Posing a serious threat to the papal supremacy, so that in 754, Pope Stephen II, d. 757, appealed to the powerful Franks for help. By this time, the Franks were ruled by Pepin III, called Pepin the Short. C. 714 to 768, who was able to defeat the Lombards. The northern region of Italy, Lombardy, is named for them. Did the American colonies have any allies in their fight against the British? Yes. France which was, of course, a long-time rival of Great Britain's was a key ally to the Americans. Supplying them with some 90% of their gunpowder. Why was Mohandas Gandhi called Mahatma? Mohandas Gandhi was called Mahatma, meaning great souled. By the common people, who viewed him as India's national and spiritual leader. He is considered the father of his country. He was born in India on October 2, 1869. As a young man, Gandhi studied law in Britain. Practicing briefly in India, 
he then travelled to British-controlled South Africa on business. Observing oppressive treatment of Indian immigrants there. He held his first campaign of passive resistance. Gandhi would later become very well known for this method of protest. Called Satyagraha, meaning firmness in truth. Back in India as of 1915, Gandhi organized a movement of the people against the British government there. Britain had taken control of India during the 1700s and remained in power. After World War I, 1914-18, Indian nationalists fought what would be a long and sometimes bitter struggle for political independence. While Gandhi's protests took the form of nonviolent campaigns of civil disobedience, such as boycotts and fasts, hunger strikes, he was more than once arrested by the authorities for causing disorder. As his actions inspired more extreme measures on the part of his followers, whose protests took the form of rioting. As a member and, later, the president of India's chief political party. The Indian National Congress, Gandhi led a fight to rid the country of its rigid caste system, which organizes Indian society into distinct classes and groups. In Gandhi's time, not only were there four varna, or social classes, but there was a fifth group of untouchables who ranked even below the lowest class of peasants and laborers. Improving the lot of the untouchables was of tantamount importance to the leader, who by this time had abandoned Western ways in favor of a life of simplicity. Beginning in 1937 Gandhi became less active in government, giving up his official roles. But he continued to be regarded as a leader of the independence movement. During World War II, 1939-45, he was arrested for demanding British withdrawal from the conflict. Released from prison in 1944. Gandhi was central to the post-war negotiations that in 1947 resulted in an independent India. A believer in the unity of humankind under one God, he remained tolerant to Christian and Muslim beliefs. Amidst an outbreak of violence between Hindus and Muslims, Gandhi was on a prayer vigil in New Delhi when a Hindu fanatic fatally shot him in 1948. Why did the Japanese attack Pearl Harbor? There is still disagreement among historians, military scholars, and investigators about why the island nation of Japan issued this surprise attack on the U.S. military installation at Pearl Harbor, Hawaii. Some believe that Japan had been baited into making the attack in order to marshal public opinion behind U.S. entry into World War II, 1939-45. Others maintain that the United States was unprepared for such an assault, or at least, the Japanese believed Americans to be in a state of unreadiness. And still others theorize that Pearl Harbor was an all-or-nothing gamble. On the part of Japan to knock America's navy out of the war before it had even entered into the fray. These are the facts, in 1941 Japanese troops had moved into the southern part of Indochina. 
prompting the United States to cut off its exports to Japan. In fall of that year, as General Hideki Tojo, 1884-1948, became Prime Minister of Japan. The country's military leaders were laying plans to wage war on the United States. On December 7 Pearl Harbor, the hub of U.S. naval power in the Pacific, became the target of Japanese attacks. As did the American military bases at Guam, Wake Island, and the Philippines. But it was the bombing of Pearl Harbor that became the rallying cry for Americans during the long days of World War II since it was at this strategic naval station, which had been occupied under treaty by the U.S. military since 1908, that Americans had felt the impact of the conflict. Why did the Hindenburg use hydrogen to keep afloat? The fact that Hindenburg used hydrogen might have been the airship's only flaw. And it was made necessary by the political climate of the time. Hindenburg was the fulfillment of German airship designer Hugo Eckener, 1868-1954 whose Zeppelin company had enjoyed years of experience and success even as other airship companies folded. By 1934 Eckener felt that his successful Graf Zeppelin which had made several transatlantic trips, was not well suited to such long-distance flights. Eckener envisioned a larger and speedier vessel. In the Hindenburg, which took her maiden flight on March 4, 1936, Eckener's vision was made real. Named for the German war hero and politician Paul von Hindenburg, 1847-1934. The immense airship measured 803 feet in length and had a diameter of 135 feet. Allowing it to hold nearly twice as much gas as other airships. The vessel was equipped with the latest technology including four Daimler-Benz diesel engines that allowed it to travel as fast as 85 miles per hour. Hindenburg was also a luxury liner, it featured private cabins, showers, dining room, promenade decks, picture windows, and even a pressurized and sealed smoking room. Cigarettes, pipes, and cigars had to be lit using an electric lighter. Matches were strictly forbidden on board. But there was one problem, Hindenburg had been designed to be lifted by helium. However, the gas was scarce at the time, and the United States refused to sell any to Germany which had been taken over by national extremist Adolf Hitler, 1889-1945. The American government suspected the Germans might soon have military plans for their airships. Thus, the Hindenburg was forced to use hydrogen 7 million cubic feet of the flammable gas. Who was the first person to reach the South Pole? Norwegian explorer Roald Amundsen, 1872-1928, was first to reach the South Pole, in December 1911, before earning this distinction. He had achieved another first sailing the Northwest Passage, from 1903 to 1906. 
Amundsen's desire to be an Arctic explorer had been with him almost his entire life. As a teen, he is said to have slept with his bedroom windows. Open year-round in order to become accustomed to the cold. When he was a young man of 21. He turned his attention away from the study of medicine to making an Arctic passage. He recognized that many of the previous, and failed, attempts to travel to the Arctic shared a common characteristic. The commanders of these expeditions had not always been ship's captains. He resolved to become an experienced navigator and soon took jobs as a deckhand on various ships. In 1897 Amundsen was chosen as the first mate on the Belgica. The ship that would carry the first Belgian Antarctic expedition under the command of Adrian Gerlake de Gomery. 1866-1934, also on board was the American Dr. Frederick Cook, 1865-1940, who had been on one of Robert E. Peary's, 1856-1920, earlier Arctic expeditions and who would, in 1909, dispute Peary's claim that he was the first to reach the North Pole. This was the same news that Amundsen would hear as he was preparing to make the North Pole. Upon learning of the success of Peary's 1909 expedition, Amundsen shifted his sights to reaching the South Pole instead, and quietly began to lay plans to do so. In fact, it was not until his expedition, which left Oslo in September 1910, was underway that he telegraphed his announcement back to Norway that he was in fact headed to the South, not the North, Pole. As it turned out, a race was on between the Norwegians and the British. Shortly after Amundsen had set sail, naval officer Robert Falcon Scott, 1868-1912, had left England at the head of an expedition to reach the South Pole. The Norwegians landed at Ross Ice Shelf, Antarctica, on February 10, 1911. It was not until ten months later. On December 14, 1911, on a sunny afternoon, that they raised their country's flag at the spot their calculations told them was the South Pole. Before heading north again, they celebrated their achievement with double rations. When British naval officer Robert Falcon Scott's expedition arrived at the South Pole on the morning of January 18, 1912, they found the Norwegian flag flying over it. On their way back the crew died due to bad weather and insufficient food supplies. Amundsen's Norwegian expedition arrived safely at their base camp on January 25, 1912. Does yellow fever still exist? Yellow fever, an acute infectious disease, does still exist in some select areas of the world. Outbreaks still occur in jungle areas. The disease was once widespread. Afflicting people in tropical climates such as Central and South America, Africa, and Asia. But with exploration during the 1500s and 1600s, and the opening of trade routes during the 1700s, the disease spread to North America by 1699, when there were epidemics in Charleston, South Carolina, 
and Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, three years later, an epidemic broke out in New York City. Yellow fever first materialized in Europe in 1723. An epidemic in Philadelphia in 1793 was determined to have been carried there aboard a ship from the West Indies. Nearly all of the city's people were afflicted by the fever, and more than four. Zero 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 people died in what has been called the worst health disaster ever to befall an American city. Breakthroughs in controlling yellow fever came in the late 1800s and early 1900s. In 1881 Cuban physician Carlos Finlay, 1833-1915, wrote a paper suggesting that yellow fever was transmitted by mosquitoes. This was proved to be true by U.S. Army Surgeon Walter Reed, 1851-1902. Who in 1900 headed a commission sent to Cuba to investigate the cause and mode of transmission of yellow fever? With this knowledge, U.S. Army officer and physician William Gorgas, 1854 to 1920, applied strict measures to destroy mosquitoes in Havana, eventually eliminating yellow fever from the Cuban port city. Serving as Chief Sanitary Officer of the Panama Canal Commission from 1904 to 1913, Gorgas implemented similar measures in the Panama Canal Zone, where the disease had been a menace. Again his methods proved effective, greatly reducing the instances of yellow fever, which allowed the canal to be completed. In 1937 the 17D vaccine was developed by American physician and bacteriologist Max Thyler, 1899-1972. The vaccine was found to be effective in combating yellow fever. In 1951 Thyler was awarded the Nobel Prize in Physiology or Medicine for his discoveries concerning the infectious disease. Conquering yellow fever was one of the great achievements of modern medicine. What is known about the Celts prior to the Roman Empire? Before Europe was conquered by Rome, Celts who were themselves divided into smaller tribes, had become rather advanced in many ways. Their society was divided among three classes, commoners, the educated, and aristocrats. They formed loose federations of tribes, raised crops, and livestock. Used the Greek alphabet to write their own language, and were among the first peoples in Northern Europe to make iron. They also developed a form of metalwork that most people today recognize as Celtic, called Latin. They never formed one united nation, however. So that when Roman armies swept across Europe, the Celtic tribes were overrun. How disastrous was the San Francisco earthquake? The quake of 1906 struck at 5.12 a.m. on April 18, and registered 8.3 on the Richter scale. 20 seconds of trembling were followed by 45 to 60 seconds of shocks. The quake cracked water and gas mains. 
which resulted in a fire that lasted three days and destroyed two-thirds of the city. The destruction and loss of lives were great, as many as 3,000, of San Francisco's 400,000 people. Were killed, the entire business district was demolished, three out of five homes had either crumbled or burned. 250,000 to 300,000 people were left homeless, and 490 city blocks were destroyed. The quake was a milestone for American journalism, the offices of the city's newspapers. The Examiner, owned by William Randolph Hearst, 1863-1951, The Call, and The Chronicle had all burned. But the first day after the disaster, the three papers joined forces across the Bay in Oakland to print a combined edition, the California Chronicle Examiner. Across the country, Will Irwin, 1873-1948, of the New York Sun, who had been a reporter and editor at the San Francisco Chronicle from 1900 to 1904, wrote a story titled The City That Was, which he completed from memory alone. It was picked up by papers around the country and became a classic of journalism. The San Francisco tragedy demonstrated the newfound ability of the American press to create an instant national story out of a local event. The Bay Area was hit again by a sizable quake in 1989. As millions tuned in to watch. The World Series at Candlestick Park outside San Francisco, the TV cameras began to shake. Because of media coverage of the baseball game. The earthquake had literally been broadcast live around the world. Once again, fires resulted from broken gas mains, and the damage was extensive. The so called Loma Pietra quake registered 7.1 on the Richter scale. Claimed 67 lives and damaged $15 billion worth of property. San Francisco's Marina District was particularly hard hit at least in part due to the fact that the area was built largely on landfill, including debris from the 1906 quake. The San Francisco earthquake of 1906 remains the worst to ever hit an American city. When did the Sunni and Shia sects of Islam form? It was during the 600s, not long after Muhammad's death. When Muslims split into two main divisions, Sunni and Shia. Sunnite Muslims, who account for most of the Islamic world today, believe that Islamic leadership passes to caliphs. Temporal and spiritual leaders, who are selected from the Prophet Muhammad's tribe. The Shiites believe, however, that the true leaders of Islam descend from Ali, c. 600-661, Muhammad's cousin and the husband of Muhammad's daughter, Fatima. Called the Shining One, c. 616 to 633. Ali, who was the fourth caliph, 656 to 61, is revered by Shiites as the rightful successor to the Prophet Muhammad and are led by his descendants. Shiites form the largest subgroup, but there are other sects within Islam as well. The Wahhabi Muslims are a puritanical sect, the Baha'is emerged from the Shiites. 
and the Ismaili Koja Muslims have been in existence almost from the beginning of Islam. While Islamic practices may vary somewhat among the sects, all Islamic people uphold the five pillars of faith. What was the first scientific textbook on human anatomy? It is a work titled On the Structure of the Human Body, written by Belgian physician and professor Andreas Ves Aleus. 1514-1564, and published in 1543, when he was in his late twenties. Like other anatomists during the Renaissance, 1350-1600, V.E.S. Aleus conducted numerous dissections of human cadavers. Publishing his findings and drawings, his textbook soon became the authoritative reference. Overturning the works of Greek physician Galen, 129 c. 199. What are the four humors? The four humors are the bodily fluids, blood, phlegm, yellow bile, and black bile, originating in the heart, brain, liver, and spleen, respectively. One work assigned to Greek physician Hippocrates, c. 460 c. 377 BC, Nature of Man, asserts that illness is caused by an imbalance of the four humors, fluids, in the body. The presence of these humors was thought to determine the health and personality of a person. This belief prevailed for centuries but was finally discredited by modern science. During the Middle Ages, 500-1350, each of the humors was assigned certain characteristics. Someone of ruddy complexion was believed to have an excessive amount of blood in his or her system. That person would be sanguine, cheerful and optimistic in character. The word sanguine is derived from the Latin word sanguis, meaning blood. Someone who had an imbalance resulting in more phlegm was considered phlegmatic, and would have a slow and impassive temperament. An individual who had excessive yellow bile was considered hot-tempered and a person who had more black bile in his or her physiological system was believed to be melancholic. When was the Brooklyn Bridge completed? The bridge which spans New York's East River to connect Manhattan and Brooklyn, was completed in 1883. Upon opening, it was celebrated as a feat of modern engineering and, with its twin Gothic towers, as an architectural landmark of considerable grace and beauty. It is a high statement of the era and expression of the optimism of the Industrial Revolution. It was designed by German-American engineer John Augustus Roebling, 1806-1869, who, upon his death, was succeeded on the project by his son Washington Augustus Roebling, 1837-1926. When the Brooklyn Bridge was finished, it was the longest suspension bridge in the world, 
it measures 1,595 feet. The bridge hangs from steel cables that are almost 16 inches thick. The cables are suspended from stone and masonry towers that are 275 feet tall. Specially designed watertight chambers allowed for the construction. Of the two towers whose bases are built on the floor of the East River. The project proved to be an enormous and dangerous undertaking. Underwater workers suffered from the bends, a serious and potentially fatal blood condition. Caused by the decrease in pressure that results from rising from the water's depth too quickly. But man prevailed against the elements and, following 14 laborious years. On May 24, 1883, the Brooklyn Bridge was inaugurated. Five years later, Brooklyn became a borough of New York City. And in 1964 the bridge was designated a National Historic Landmark.